Today what we're going to be talking about is the five major habits that I have found almost every successful person has. Now the first one, which I think is probably the most important, but for some reason I, I find that almost every single successful person does this. And Tim Ferriss in his new book talks about that he's interviewed hundreds and hundreds of millionaires and billionaires and influencers and some of the most successful people in the world. And the first thing that he says is that 85 to 90% of them wake up early and have some sort of morning routine. And so if you, if you just look at some of the people that I was able to find out have morning routines, you have Jack Dorsey who started Twitter. He wakes up at 5.30 every single morning and he's a multi-billionaire. Richard Branson who obviously founded Virgin and many companies and is a multi-multi-billionaire as well, says he wakes up at 5.45 every single morning. Uh, he actually opens his shutters so that the sun, when it comes in, it comes into his room and makes him wake up. Um, you also look at Tim Cook, who is the, the CEO of Apple. He says he wakes up at 4.30 every single morning. You look at Howard Schultz, who's the guy who founded and is the CEO of Starbucks. He wakes up at 5.30 every morning. So the number one thing that I find that most successful people, extremely successful people do is they wake up early and they have some sort of morning routine. And you might ask yourself, why would they wake up early? The reason why is because that's the time where they can focus on themselves. When you go into the office or you go into work, usually you're on someone else's time, whether you own your own business and you're on all of your employees' time, making sure, make, make sure everything's in place and everything's going the right way. Or number two is you're, you're on your boss's time if you work for somebody. So if you have to leave your house at 8 a.m. and you wake up at 7.30, you jump in the shower and all of those things, you leave at 8, you're waking up, immediately waking up to go into somebody else's time. That's what you're doing. You're focusing on somebody else as soon as you wake up in the morning. These people like to focus on themselves, so they wake up a couple hours early. They meditate, they do morning routines, they journal, they have workout exercises, they have a routine so they wake up a couple hours early to work on themselves before they do anything else. It's just like when the, the plane is going down, they say put the oxygen on yourself first. When you wake up in the morning, focus on yourself first because that will then make everybody else around you and make your life better as well. So the first thing is obviously a morning routine. The second thing that I found with the most successful people is they are very, very big on not only making goals, but actually writing their goals down. And this is key because 40 years ago, Harvard did a study and they found out that out of everyone that was in their classes or students that were there, only about 3% of them actually wrote their goals down on a piece of paper. Now, some people knew their goals or what their goals were, but not all of them, only 3% of them, wrote them down with a piece of pen and paper and wrote it down. And what they found 30 years down the road where they went back and looked at them was that that 3% that wrote down their goals were 10 times more successful than the other 97% 30 years down the road. So if you could take a page out of their book, for some reason, writing down your goals makes it seem real in your brain. It makes you clarify exactly what you want. It makes you put a date and a deadline on exactly what you want. Sometimes it makes you look at it and say, well, now that this is on a piece of paper, I need to actually make a plan of how to hit these goals versus them just floating around in your brain. So if you have goals or New Year's resolutions that you're working on, don't just let them float around in your brain. Put them on a piece of paper. Put a deadline to it. Put a goal down on the piece of paper and figure out when you're going to do it. The plan of what you have to do to get there. How you're going to get there. All of those things are important. So the most successful people write it down on a piece of paper. Because when it's in your brain, it's just kind of floating around in your brain. But when it's on a piece of paper, it is physical and it is now something that is real and exists in the world. So the second thing they do is they write down all of their goals. The third thing that I found with most successful people is they have a habit of creating mentors, like going out and actually finding mentors or actually finding coaches to make them be better at whatever it is that they're working towards. And there was a study that I found that said that the average millionaire over the course of their lifetime has had seven very serious mentors or coaches. Now why is that important? Because if you're trying to get really good at something or you're in a certain industry, why not take your time, your money, your energy and invest it into getting a mentor or a coach who's been doing it longer than you? Because here's the thing, they could teach you 20 years of experience of what they've done right, what they've done wrong, most importantly, 
and they could teach you all of that in a much shorter period of time than it would take you to go out, make mistakes, and learn for yourself. So basically what a coach or a mentor does is it shortens your learning curve. You know, what they learned in 20 years in the industry, you might be able to learn in two years. That gives you an extra 18 years to get better at whatever it is that you're focusing on. So if you don't have a mentor, you don't have a coach, ask yourself, how can you find a mentor or coach? Whether that's someone, a lot of people say, I wish I could find a mentor that I don't have to pay for. But when I was 19 years old, I paid $500 a month, which was more than I paid in rent, to have my very first mentor, which at that point in time, I thought I was crazy. My friends thought I was crazy too. But it was the best decision I ever made because it got me to be successful a lot quicker than if I had just tried to go out and figure it out myself. And when you pay to have a mentor versus just having a friend who is a mentor, but when you have a paid mentor, they actually, because of the fact they're accepting your money, they actually feel some sort of responsibility for your success. So they're more likely to help you along the way of success and go out of their way to help you be more successful as well. So the third thing that I found for the most successful people in the world is that they always have mentors and coaches. The fourth thing that I found as far as a habit is positive self-talk. They believe in themselves. They have self-confidence. And I wanna tell you this, nobody's born with self-confidence. Confidence is something that you pick up along the way to success. But what they seem to realize is that they believe in themselves and when they believe in themselves, they're much more likely to get there. And the, the way that I like to think about it is this, my favorite analogy dealing with the way that we think in our minds has to do with a garden. So the, the analogy is think of your mind as a garden and you are the only person that can tend to this garden. Nobody else can. It's impossible to go out and plant strawberry seeds in that garden and expect that somehow you're gonna grow tomatoes. It's impossible. You can't put strawberry seeds in the ground and get tomatoes. Just like you can't plant negative thoughts or talk to yourself negatively in your head and expect that you're just gonna have positive life or a positive outcome or a positive attitude, right? You have to learn that when, because let's be honest, most of us are really, really harsh on ourselves. We would never talk to somebody that we love the way that we talk to ourselves in our own heads. That should not be the case though. So when you start to notice yourself talking down to yourself, you need to immediately stop it and replace that thought with something positive. Because at this point in time, if you've been talking down to yourself for a while, it's, it's somewhat of a habit. And the only way to actually break a habit is to stop it as soon as you get into the middle of it. As soon as it starts, you, you try to stop it as quickly as possible. And what you have to realize is you can't always control your first thought at this point, because that's your automatic thought. But you can always control your second thought. So that's something that you need to concentrate on. Is to have positive self-talk to make yourself believe in yourself more than anything else. And the fifth thing that I found for the most successful people in the world is that they read often. The average CEO reads 60 books per year. 60, and we're talking about CEOs. These are people who are already at the top of companies. Read 60 books per year, that's more than one per week. And so if you look back at the past year, how many books have you read this year? If you wanna be successful, don't you think you should just take a page out of a successful person's book and follow these five steps and go, all right, well, if they read 60 books in a year, maybe I could read once a month. And then maybe you start, after you start going once a month, maybe you decide I could probably do once a week or twice a month, whatever it might be. But you realize if these people are successful, there's steps to being successful. Take a page out of their book and do exactly what they do, right? These people are constant learners. And one of the things my first mentor used to talk about was Kaizen. It's a, a Japanese word for constant, never-ending improvement. We should all be on this journey of Kaizen, of constantly never-ending improvement, trying to improve every single day. And the people that are already at the peak of peaks, these CEOs, are still constantly trying to improve themselves and make themselves better. So don't you think that we should if we're not where we wanna be at this point? So once again, those are the, the five things. Number one is they wake up early. Number two is that they write down their goals and they make them physical. Number three is that they have mentors and coaches. Number four, positive self-talk. They believe in themselves. They have confidence. They figure out what's going on in their brain and they make sure they wire it the way that they want to with positivity. And the fifth thing is that they read very often. So if you like this episode, please do me a favor. Please give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. If you have any comments, please type them, type them down below. And I have new episodes that come out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if you want to see more, go ahead and click the subscribe button as well. But I appreciate you. 
and I'll talk to you soon.